gonna be like in today's episode, we're gonna fuck with Hayden and some nitrous. <laughs> What's going on guys? Holy shit. I just got up I just came Dizzy's and he's actually working on this Subaru. <laughs> this is a Subaru that I did uh some intercooler piping on. Like shit like three weeks ago. We just haven't finished it yet. It's got like a whole rotated setup on it. It's just a stock motor, but we're gonna do a video of uh installing some gauges on it. Check that shit out. I fucking miss welding. We actually uh Right before we left the shop, I had to bust this out and like, I did this this hot side piping right here in like, what, like three hours, Izzy? Uh, I probably took it like two hours. Two hours? Yeah. I did this whole hot side piping in two hours from start to finish. We literally, I drove to Iowa to go check out a possible job and uh, we got back. It took us like, what, it was like nine hours to drive from Colorado to Iowa and we came back and busted this out the same day was up to like two o'clock working on this and then the next day we literally moved everything out of the shop what's crazy is there was like a foot of snow here in colorado like two days ago and yesterday it was 50 degrees and today it's like 55 today too freaking colorado's got some bipolar ass weather the saint's getting tuned tomorrow by harvey over at boost creep we're just putting um some finishing touches on it we just gotta do like a whole some little things get like the piping all put on and everything and we gotta uh, actually go to Harvey later today and take his cob in there to get a, like a base map for the speed density because we switched it over to speed density. So now it just runs off the map and the intake air temp sensor instead of the map, right? Yeah. Yeah, because before it's a map system. No map, so we deleted the mass airflow. Stock yeah. Stock pigtails over here. They make like a kit for that, right? Yeah, well it's just the intake air temp sensor right here. Uh oh. And just splices right into like the math. Splices into the two two wires from the math. But yeah, so we're just gonna finish up some things. Uh, we'll probably get the gauges installed here after we uh, put the interclear piping on, and then we just gotta go to Harvey, and then we can try to start it up and bleed the coolant and see what the hell else is wrong with it. So we're gonna try to start it up right now without it on speed density on the stock map. See if it idles. I don't think it's gonna idle, but. Yo, that sounds like shit. What is that noise? We're going to start installing the gauges right now. We're just going to be installing the AEM boost gauge and the AEM wideband or the air to fuel ratio sensor. Right now, uh, so basically how we do it is we just um, basically put like a fuse adapter into the stock fuse box, which looks like this right here. So that way that's going to be your main like 12 volt power. So that way it's already fused and everything and you don't got to mess with trying to find like an ignition switch or anything. Because you want the gauges to come on with ignition, you don't want them to be on all the time. So that's an easy way to do that. This is like a dollar fifty at advance, so it's really useful. You just gotta. What I do is I just bridge it off the radio power, so it, like the stereo turns on with your ignition. And that's the best way to do it on the Subarus. It's the radio and audio. And this is 15 amp one. Basically, you keep the 15 amp on the original side, and then you use the 10 amp for the gauges. And this is, uh, what year is this STI? This is a 2005. Yeah, so this is a 2005 STI. Um, it should be pretty similar for most of the models. Even the WRX is around this year. And even maybe like later or earlier models of the STIs and the WRXs. But we're just going to run some of the cables for right now. Okay, so basically you got to take, um, there's a vacuum line that comes from the engine bay over here. I'll show you. Hold up. We got it teed right here. There's that T right down in there. That... The vacuum line goes to this. Yeah, so the vacuum line off that T actually goes to right there on the electric sensor for the boost controller or the fucking boost controller for the boost gauge so like basically the pigtail just plugs right into there it's a really simple install for these there's some that like you have to run a vacuum line all the way from the engine bay to the inside of the car but yeah, this one these ones are pretty simple just goes in the, the engine bay wherever and then you connect the pigtail to it so we got the vacuum line right there i mean it's pretty self-explanatory you just Put the vacuum line right on the end of it and just fucking YOLO it with a zip tie. And then obviously you can trim it to however long you need it, but I mean, it doesn't really matter how long it is or anything. It's not going to affect the boost readings or vacuum readings. Oh shit, there's going to be a pain on the ass to Spit get. on it. <laughs> I'm being serious, spit on it. It'll go in right away. Oh, no. I swear. Let me spit on it, bitch. 
just not that dirty but and i mean for most most of the time you really don't have to put zip ties on the bar fittings but you might as well because if it spikes boost and you slam the throttle shut it might pop shit off but that's basically it for the sender it just goes out to a t and this one goes off the blow off valve and the manifold right here but i'll probably just zip tie this like out of the way and then just run the wiring in here and then this cable right here has to go to uh, the oxygen sensor or the wideband sensor up front, which is over here. So that's, those are the only things you have to run to the engine bay. And normally we start from, so the wideband sensor is down in here. It's just right there. You're also gonna wanna um, obviously add another O2 bung basically because the wideband sensor itself uses the same threads and everything as a normal O2 bung. And actually the wideband gauge actually comes with the bung. So if you don't have an extra one, you're gonna have to add one because the sensor has to have that to work. And then the pigtail for this is right here. And that's the only thing you have to connect from like the actual like uh, harness that AEM gives you to the engine bay. And then the rest of the stuff stays inside with it. There's just basically like a power for the wideband and the boost gauge. So for the most part, running um, the actual harness itself through the firewall, you're gonna wanna try to find a pre-existing hole I mean, sometimes if you really can't find a hole, you can drill one, but I mean, I, I would suggest against that because sometimes you don't know what's going to be on the other side. But we found this hole right here, and it looks like a good candidate to shove some shit through. So that's where we're going to put the harness through for the actual wideband itself and for the boost controller. So this harness right here is the actual harness for the wideband. It has the bigger pigtail on this side for the actual sensor that goes in the exhaust. It's actually already plugged in. It's just been chilling right here. Yeah, I showed them that earlier. But this is also like the newest style gauge. Like it reads to like the hundredth place on the wideband, which is new. Well, so yeah, so we're gonna start on this side because that part that goes inside is smaller. So it makes it easier to fit through the hole. I should put that rubber grommet back on. Yeah. If you wanna be safe, make sure you always have your protection rubber on the outside. So I found the little rubber grommet. Let's make this hole bigger. Alright, so now we got the rubber plug through the hole. We can go ahead and shove this end back through the firewall. So then now you have a nice rubber grommet so nothing can happen to the wires and get cut by the firewall or anything like that. Safety first, guys. Hey, bitch. Slow down. Let me see. Alright, All right, so this is uh, the harness for the boost gauge. And this is the side that plugs into the sensor that we teed off down here. And so what you're gonna do the you're gonna want to do the same thing. You're gonna want to shove this end in first through the firewall because it's gonna be easier feeding that smaller side in. So you're just gonna want to poke it through the grommet again. Let's see if we can get it in there. Yeah, don't break it though. But yeah, so once you run that in there, you can just uh, just pull all the slack through. Or I mean, I'd leave a little bit inside the engine bay, so that way like it has some room and it's not always pulling on it. But just leave a little bit of slack inside the engine bay, and then um, try to find a spot inside to tuck it all up into. Also, and for the boost gauge, it has like a little bit of wires like this on it. Well, the wide band has it too, but it's on this side of the pigtail. You're gonna want to push this all the way through the firewall too, because you need this on the inside of the car. That's the power to the gauges. Yeah, there's like a power, a ground, and then the white and blue wires are for like either data logging or whatever you want. So just like that, we got the two harnesses. This one is from the wideband, and this one right here is for the boost sensor, for the boost gauge. And so, I mean, it's as simple as that. You just gotta pull the slack out. And I mean, just leave like a little bit of slack here so it's not always pulling on it. And same for this one, but it looks nice and clean. You still got that plug in there. You're not gonna cut up the wires. And now we'll just go finish up the rest of it on the inside. Also, I did not weld that shit. That was not me. <laughs> so he's trying to fish, fish the wires for the gauges. Since this one has a gauge pod that goes up here, he's trying to fish the wires up through the dash right there. So that way it's a nice clean look and you can't see the wires from the outside. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but you can also take like a single piece of wire and like push it down through the hole first and then black tape like the wire to the plug and then pull them up but he likes to do shit the hard way he likes to contort his body in all kinds of different ways <laughs> you having fun is he 
we're gonna have to uh, add an extension off this ground because once we put the power onto the cable where like the fuse thing is like the fuse adapter is we're not gonna have very much like ground to work with so we're just putting a butt connector on here so that way we can um, just like put that part of the wire onto the ground right there and then now we can put our ground wherever we want you're gonna want to be gentle plugging uh, the actual gauges themselves in because all they have is small little pins on the on the backs of the gauges and you don't want to bend them because they're also kind of like a pain in the ass but they're kind of a pain in the ass to put in I'm probably like blocking Izzy's view but we'll see in this fucking pod but this big one is for the boost gauge and then the other two ones are for the wide band itself we have the ground just chilling on some metal and we have the power hooked up and uh, you're gonna want to tune your key to the ignition or you're gonna want to put the key in and make sure that doesn't come on before you turn the key to ignition when you turn the key to ignition so that's that's with the key off and then turn the key on and the gauges should come on and they're obviously not going to read anything right now because the car's not on so we know that they're good we're just going to finish like hiding these the harnesses and everything the gauges all finished up we got all the wires hit and everything and they're looking pretty good so that's what it should look like your power wire should look like when you're all said and done and that's like that nice little like fuse block adapter shit so like now this power wire is fused so all the gauges and everything are fused and the ground is kind of like i don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's kind of like way up in there yeah you're not gonna be able to see it but just grounded to something that's metal and not painted and you should be good so that's gonna be it for this video guys some updates on the rx7 so right now i don't have uh anywhere to like actually take the motor out of the rx7 or start it so that's why i haven't done anything with it lately but so i'm just like i'm getting a new job here soon so i should definitely have some more money and uh, hopefully in like a week or two i'll have somewhere to actually like take the motor out and i'm gonna be uh rebuilding the motor like the stock v8 that i'll be getting for it so there'll be videos on that you just gotta be patient but for now that's all we got i'll just i'll try to record like most of the content that we do like on any type of cars or anything so hopefully it's not too boring for you guys but you just gonna have to wait a little bit until i start on the rx7 also don't forget to like comment and subscribe uh it's gonna be it for this video i hope it wasn't too boring for you guys but god damn my ass is cold my breath breeze is kicking up in there oh shit <laughs>